it, but the number one question that consumers ask about cremation is, how do I know this is my loved one? Right. Mm. How do I know? And that stems from grief and not really a lack of trust of their cremation provider. Um, I, I have told the story in different ways that I had a friend whose husband died and uh, he wanted to have a witness cremation and he wanted to wait until after the cremation and he didn't drive. So we drove him down to the crematory, had the witness cremation, went and had lunch, got him a little drunk, celebrated his husband's life. Three hours later, come back to pick up his cremated remains and the beautiful piece of pottery he had brought for that purpose were we get in the car and the first question he asks is, how do I know this is my husband? Mm. I mean, there couldn't have been more safeguards in place to ensure that that was his husband. That was grief speaking. And so whenever there's, you know, again, we fear the unknown, right? So whenever there's a little bit of distance between uh, or, um, or misunderstanding or lack of clarity about, you know, where the cremation is taking place, there's a risk. There's a risk of, of that miscommunication with the consumer and that sparks their fear. Mm-hmm. But you're absolutely right, Tony. You live in New Jersey. Funeral homes can't own crematories in New Jersey. They have to be on nonprofit cemetery property. And there's a number of states with statutes in place like that. Um, I live in Chicago, Illinois. By statute in in Chicago, there cannot be a crematory in the city. So crematories are all around the edge of the city of Chicago serving funeral homes in Chicago. So you pick cremation and you die in Chicago, you're going to be cremated elsewhere. And that's just kind of the rules that we have to follow. So there's no, again, there's no rational reason why I as a funeral home owner can't outsource my cremations. That's That may be the best business decision for me to be compliant with laws, but also, you know, for a number of other factors. And yet you still have to have an answer to where is that cremation taking right. place and what is the chain of custody and, you know, be able to explain all of that to, to kind of counter that fear. And so, you know, that's that's one example of advice I offer is know what the opposition is going to say, because ironically, some of the, the strongest voices about not in my backyard are people who choose cremation, have chosen cremation, mm. um, a common testimony, a theme um, for people who oppose crematory placement is, I don't want to, I chose cremation for my husband or my person, fill in the blank of the relationship. I don't want a constant reminder of their death. I don't want to have to see that crematory every day, you know, so Mm -hmm. not across the parking lot, not on the corner, as if somehow that's going to, you know, um, uh, amplify their grief, right? They're already grieving mm. and they've already chosen cremation. So, you know, they're not against it full, full stop, mm-hmm. but, um, but somehow, you know, so that's what I mean. It's not countoring logic or counting emotion with logic and facts isn't always a factor. Right. 